Hello, this is Scotty McCoy, and I am doing a book titled The Ultimate Slasher Movie Encyclopedia. And uh, for this section, I am interviewing the A Nightmare on Elm Street cast members, and I currently have on the phone with me Brooke Bundy, who played Elaine Parker in A Nightmare on Elm Street Parts 3 and 4, Dream Warriors and the Dream Master. Hi, Brooke. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm very grateful that I'm able to talk to you, and I'm so glad that your daughter has uh, given me your information because I am a huge fan of yours, and I loved your role in A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I was the best bad mom ever. <laughs> right when you answered the phone, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. I actually I hear the voice just like I heard it in A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, the first question I have for you um, is, did you have an audition for A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors? And if so, what was the audition like? I, I did have an audition. Um, my wonderful agent at the time, who since retired, had to talk me into it, though, because I really avoided doing um, horror. Because I was afraid that some, you know, some fool out there would be sitting in a dark theater and say, hey, that looks like fun, you know, and go out and something horrible to somebody so I just didn't want to have that, and that kind of you know connection but she said no no please I really want to see you and blah 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 and I went oh okay okay and then I got a call back and was like oh no a call back oh okay so I went in the call back and then she said I got it I was like no no how could that be so and then I got on the set and it was like oh oh this is fun I like this and everybody was so incredible. I mean, Robert is like such a prince. So um, the director, the producer, the writer, everybody was just fantastic. So it was like, oh, this is not bad at all. And they're all renowned actors, too. So it's not, you know, you don't have to teach somebody how to act while you're on the set. <laughs> it was just great. Just great. That's awesome. So the next question I have for you is... Um, how did you find out or get asked back for the fourth of Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Master? Oh, well, you know, I mean, I've, I've said this story to so many people, um, and I'm sorry if it's just going to sound like it's repetitious, but I was booked um, through the same agent, and um, I said, uh, I've died. I mean, I, huh? <laughs> she said, well, whether you died or not, I don't know. We're taking the booking. Are you okay with that? And I said, Yeah. So the first day on the set, I went to Robert, and I said, I, I don't understand. I mean, you killed me in the previous uh, movie, in three. And he said, Brooke, and I said, what? He said, shut up, okay? Said, mm, okay. <laughs> so it's like, no one really, I don't, I still, and someone actually explained it to me, and it's still, it just went in one ear out the other. It's, it's still a mystery. So but right. the point is, I did it. And I just had, a, I, I had even more of a ball doing that. Awesome. And I got Tuesday and Andras and Brooke and the whole gang. And Toy was there. Toy's mother was my best friend. <laughs> um, oh, my, yeah, my best friend. And, and just, you know, I mean, just like this wonderful group of people. And Remy and, you know, just all, the whole gang. That's great. I uh, messaged Toy um, a couple, maybe months ago, and I told her when I get to the Nightmare on Elm Street section if she would be open to an interview, and she said, absolutely. I love uh, interview uh, ha talking about my past with the Nightmare on Elm Street because she apparently loves the franchise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's a little dull. I was thinking about her the other day. Um, she's just so beautiful. Anyway, yes. so that's enough of that. So what's the next one? The next question I have is, um, when you did the scene where uh, you got your head severed by Freddy Krueger and you're yelling at Chris in the cleaner room, um, how did they film that scene exactly? Well, what we did, first of all, we, we rehearsed it for a large part of the day because um, they wanted to use, um, they had a camera on a track, so they didn't want any editing. They wanted it one, one shot. <laughs> So um, we had to be incredibly precise. So um, from the door where I'm screaming, um, or he's saying something about, you know, get the, get the bourbon bitch or something like that. <laughs> and I look, I kind of look in the room and then he he um, uh, decapitates me and I move out of the room and he grabs the head and then brings that in and then goes through the room and slashes the pillows. And, and those were actual razors. That he had on that he had on his hands. Those weren't, you know, like rubber oh, wow. things, because he had to slash the pillows, and then all of a 
done this with our, it was a really complicated shot. So that was that part. The second part of it was that I had gone in and had a head made and, you know, with a special effects team. So, um, so that he would be able to grab that head. Um, so it was, and it was interesting because the special effects people were, um, very, um, compassionate, for lack, for lack of a better word, and they, because you, you can't move, it's like being in an MRI, you can't move, so, mm-hmm. um, while, the, while the latex dries, I guess, so they kept talking to me because people apparently freak out with this stuff, particularly if it's mm-hmm. on your face, right. so I had little straws in my nose and everything, I, I was okay, but it was, but they just kept talking to me and asking me dumb questions and <laughs> uh, having music on and stuff like that, so I wasn't like freak. Right. So that was that was basically, and someone actually bought the head on eBay and brought it to a convention. Wow, that's amazing. It, yeah, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> so, what was it like working with Patricia Arquette? Uh, Patricia, Patricia and I had almost no scenes. I'm trying to think. We we had almost no scenes. So, but I mean, I just know her, um, you know, being a really fine actress and a, a dedicated actress and professional. And she has a special kind of beauty. Um, when you look at her, it's just, it's, it's so interesting. She's got such a beautiful face <laughs> and she's a beautiful person inside. So it was, so I have, you know, fond memories, but we did very little together. Okay. So um, I know you did have a scene with Heather Langenkamp. So what was it like working with her? Oh, she's great. She's a, you know, she's funny. She's professional. She's, um, you know, she just and she clued me in because I didn't know the franchise. Right. So in three, I was like, well, I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> and and who are you in relationship to my daughter? Kind of thing. So um, right. So she clued me in on everything. Gave me the whole background. That's good. And the last, um, the last one about the cast that I have is, uh, what was it like working with Robert England? Well, you know, he's. Um, He's an incredible person. He's an incredible actor. Well, he's classically trained, um, and he's a, a consummate professional. And also, you know, it, it really it doesn't start from the bottom. It starts from the top. How people are treated on a set. Right. So if the star treats people well, then that just trickles down to the makeup department, the wardrobe department, to the props, to everything. And he just sort of fits the tone that everybody is. Um, you know, right. happy to be there and congenial and friendly and doing whatever they can to be of assistance. So that's that's the tone that he says, and and still being very professional, but being a lot of fun too. Right. So um, it was a, it was really a joy to work with him. That's great. So um, what was the best part about filming both the Nightmare on Elm Street films, and which one was the worst? Um, I think one of the worst was Rodney. Um, he he was supposed to be the marionette with yeah. all the veins and arteries sticking out of his feet and, and hands. Right. Remember that? Um, he, he sat next, I was sitting in a chair just waiting, you know, to, to start my scene and he sat down next to me and it was one of those horrible double takes where I went like, oh my God. Right. Because it was so real. It was just, just it was so awful. Wow. So that was, um, just looking at that, it was just really disgusting. I, I'll never forget it. Um, one of the best parts was just having fun, you know, um, going into the ADR room and, and um, ad-libbing, saying right. things like, oh, Kristen, you're such a pain in the neck when my <laughs> head was cut off. Uh, or, oh, Kristen, you ruin everything. Um, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just had so much. I have such a sore throat. Uh <laughs> So, if you were to reprise your role as Elaine Parker in another Nightmare on Elm Street in the future, would you? Oh, absolutely, without a hesitation. Oh, yeah, I think I'd be the grandmother now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, oh, well, Kristen's dead in this franchise, so maybe, uh, maybe, I mean, she was best friends with Lisa Wilcox. Maybe you would have been like the mother figure of the of um, Lisa's Alice's, you know, her son. Yeah, I'm not a real mother figure. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so something that's not related about A Nightmare on Elm Street, if you can describe to us how did you get your start in acting? Um, I got my start in acting, um, I was doing commercials in New York and I was modeling when I was 14. And um, I just, just, it just started. And then when I was 15, um, I was already going to professional children's school in New York. Um, my, one of my classmates, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, said, hey, you know, this one of the actors is leaving the, the play that I'm in. Why don't you come and, you know, uh, audition? So I said, okay. It was a slow summer. So I said, okay, okay. So I went and auditioned for the great Ilya Kazan, not knowing who he was. And uh, I got the part. And I thought, wow, this is really easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then when I came to Hollywood, to be... At that point, I was 18, I think. I think I was 18 by then. Um, so, I, But I still looked about 14. So to be 18, legal age, I'm looking at 14 with a Broadway credit and a member of Screen Actors Guild, it just, I mean, doors just flew open, and I was really fortunate. That's awesome. And then the last question I got for you is, uh, what was your favorite memory about filming either of the films? <laughs> um, you know, I think just um, just the friendships that you know that started, right. um, and and it was so surprising. I mean, I've done a lot of work, but I never really created um, a relationships with people the way I did on Nightmare. Right. Um, you know, and, and it was it was totally um, a surprise to me because, like I said, I did not want to do it. Um, I thought these kinds of movies are horrible, and we shouldn't be doing them. And, Unexpected. <laughs> Definitely. I thank you very much for making time to have the interview with me. Oh, absolutely. I'm in beautiful Newport Beach right now. That's awesome. Um, I wish I was there. Right now I'm in uh, rainy Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, you are. Yep. Oh, yeah, what's going on in Pennsylvania? Is you're getting a lot of rain, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. It's pouring down right now. Um, not thunderstorms or anything. It's just pouring down rain, though. Downpours. <laughs> wow, wow. But well, stay dry and stay safe. Definitely. Thank you very much. And I will let you know that I um I talk to Tiffany pretty much every day, not, not, maybe every other day, depending on my work schedule and how, how busy I am at work. But uh, she's a very, very nice uh, lady, and I'm very glad that she got me in touch with you. Oh, it's my pleasure. And um, if you want, um, I'll try and see if um, some of the other actors. Uh, we have a big convention in Chicago. Awesome. So, uh, and that's the first week in August. So I'll see if I can hook up anybody else with you, too. That sounds okay. great. Um, I actually spoke to Russell Todd. He plays in Friday the 13th Part 2, and he has a convention in Indianapolis. And he's going to get me – it's like a Friday the 13th Part 2 reunion. So I can send you an email like I will with him, but instead for the A Nightmare on Elm Street series. And you can uh, maybe print them out or show them the email and then with my contact information even. Okay. And now we have another one coming up in Kentucky, so – just to let you know if you want to swing by or something. Awesome, thank uh, you very yeah. much. Um, what is uh, uh are, like is it just a night is it like a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four or Five or like Three? Any which ones is it? Like is it like a, a reunion? It's yeah, I think it's I think it's four, but I'm not sure. But okay. I'm sure anybody from Three would be more than welcome. So uh, we just we just had one a month ago in uh, Canada. Okay. In, um, um, uh, uh, Niagara Falls, Canada. Nice. So, and that was really nice. Awesome. So, and we were. Uh, it was just just the three of us. It was Robert. Um, um, uh, what's her name? I can't believe her name just fell out of my head. Which was it? Was it really part three? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Heather, or it could have been Jennifer Rubin. No. Um. Maybe it was four. Anyway, she's okay. she's. Amanda. It was Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Okay. Yeah. So she was great, and it was so it was just the three of us. Okay. So 
Okay. So, um, but this one in Chicago is going to be big, I think. That's great. So I will definitely shoot you an email with my contact information. If you can pass that around, that will be amazing. Thank you very much. Okay. Absolutely. My pleasure. Not a problem. And have a nice day and enjoy the sunny weather. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Have a nice Take one. Take care, Scott. Yep, bye you bye. too. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.